Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a comparison between all four of these espresso coffee makers. Now on the left we've got the Verissimo machine from Starbucks. There we've got the Nespresso Vertio line, that's their newer line of espresso and coffee maker. And here we've got the Cure K Cafe. And here we've got the Nespresso Original line. So Right off the bat, here's here's one of the main differences. So that one does espresso and coffee. Espresso and coffee. Espresso and coffee. This one only does espresso. It will do a double shot of espresso. They call it a lungo, but it doesn't do a coffee. So I'm going to kind of save that up to the end, even though it's kind of a really nice machine for lattes and cappuccinos. These three here can do both. They can do espresso shots and coffees now they're these two their coffees are around eight ounces a keurig can do a coffee can do a six eight ten or twelve but normally a, a k-cup is really meant to be brewed around an eight ounce so that's in comparison with these so this one's the starbucks verissimo so i'm not sure if they're still making these or if they stopped or what but you can still buy the pods um, there are some different manufacturers that make pods but these are what the pods look like. They're not K-cups. They're Verissimo, and they're very specific to this machine. Here you've got Nespresso. These are really different cups. Um, and these are only specific to... Now, they make different types of machines, but it's called the Vertio line. Then we've got K-cups. You know, K-cups are by far the most numerous. All kinds of different brands. You know, if it's a standard K-cup, it's going to work in a Keurig. And then this is the original line from the Espresso. These are very numerous. You can get lots of different flavors. Um, they've been around a while, but they're just, you, you don't get much coffee grounds in there, so you can't uh, run much water through it. So, but there are lots of different flavors of these. And then what you might notice is, so this is, this is just the maker you have to get a uh, frother off to the side, which they sell that with it, but it's extra. Same with the Nespresso. You have to get the frother extra, and they're kind of, it's kind of like the same line. It's, re, you know, you can't um, wash this in the dishwasher. Same with this one. It comes off its base. And so the Keurig really shines in this area because the frother is built in. Very nice, very easy to clean up. This is a very nice frother. Um, you can take it off storage. You put your milk in there. It uses uh, steam from the water to uh, make the froth. And it makes really, really good froth. All these have holding tanks. So here you've got the water tanks. Here's a water tank for this one. You know, the Keurig's got the, big, the biggest water tank. And then this one has a water tank too. So let's just go over the pods. So... The Verissimo, the Starbucks machine, they come in two types of pods. You're going to get what's called a brewed pod or an espresso. Here's the espresso. It's got about a, a tablespoon and a half of coffee grounds. The brewed pod, which is the coffee, eight ounce, it, it has two tablespoons of coffee in it. And it's going to puncture the bottom and it punctures the top when, it's, when it brews it. Here's what a pod looks like. And you have to manually select. So it's got an espresso button and it's got a coffee button. That's the eight ounce button. This is called a milk button. It brews it at a little bit lower temperature at five ounces. And then it does have hot water. But the pods go up here. You know, you put the pod in here. And a K-cup, you know, a K-cup won't fit. But it kind of makes you look like they are K-cups or something. I was very confused with this at first. But the pods are very well made. They have a filter at the bottom, which keeps out the um, sediment. So the Verissimo is a very nice machine. Now let's get to the Nespresso. This is kind of a really fancy machine, in my opinion. Here's your cups. It uses spin technology. So it's going to poke a hole in the middle. It's going to inject the hot water and steam. And then the, the coffee is going to come out around the side as it's spinning the cup. And this machine has a barcode system. So it reads that barcode. You put your, you put your, this is a coffee pod, which is noticeably bigger. 
you have espresso pods. See how that has very little coffee in it? When I put that in it, all I do is close this. The machine will read that barcode and then it brews it accordingly. So it's going to brew it at the almost like 1.5 ounces of water you're going to get out. It's all automatic. You just press, you're just going to press a brew button. It does it automatically. And when you put a coffee pot in and press that, it reads it and says, oh, I'm going to run eight ounces of water through here and give you a coffee. So it's, that's a really nice feature. The Keurig K-Cups. They come in all different varieties, sizes. Um, you're going to put it in. It's going to puncture the bottom and, and puncture the top. And you're allowed, so you get to choose. You know, do I want a strong coffee? Do I want a normal coffee? Do I want a wheat coffee? And it does have a strong brew, which brews it a little bit longer. This machine's real nice. It's got a latte and a shot. So I can take these K-cups, these coffee K-cups, and I can run two ounces of water through them to give me a really concentrated espresso shot. And then over here, I've got the Lungo and the Espresso. And the Espresso gives me 1.3 ounces, and the Lungo gives me 3.7, like a double shot. And same with here. This is a two-ounce shot for, like, doing lattes and cappuccinos. And on the, the Espresso, when, I, when you put the, these um, Espresso pods in, you're automatically going to get... 1.35 ounces of water through it. So it's a very small amount of water. Now, same over here with the Verissimo. I, like I said, I have to manually select it. So you could put a an espresso pot in and try to get a coffee out of it, you know, and you could do it vice versa, but they really want you to read it and, and just press what they have figured out. The espresso is going to get 1.5 ounces about, and the brew is about 8 ounces. So they all do about the same size coffee. You just get more options with the Keurig. And so Keurig cups, I, I cut one cut open. They usually have two tablespoons of coffee grounds in them and the paper filter. That paper filter is really nice. It prevents sediment. Now, I didn't see any paper filter on these, but I didn't get any sediment either. So whatever technology they're using, you don't get sediment in your coffee, even though they're not using a paper filter. And then you've got the, the original line over here. Okay, so let's start off with a coffee. We're gonna do a coffee on these three. I'm gonna grab the brewed pod, I'm gonna put it in. You just put it in and close it, and then I'm gonna hit the brew button here in a second. Same with this, I lift this lever to the nice, this is the fanciest machine. This is a brewed pod. The other one's not used. This is a brewed pod, or a coffee pod. So I'm just gonna set it in there. Now I close this, it kind of pierces it, I have to turn this all the way over to the lock and I'll be pressing this button. The Keurig machine, I'm gonna get my cake up. I'm gonna put it in there, I'm gonna close it. It's gonna pierce it, I'll hit the coffee and the eight ounce. So let's start over here with the Verissimo. I'll just hit this button, this button, coffee, eight ounce. This machine's the loudest. This machine's the coolest, and this is probably the simplest. So you get coffee almost automatically from this. This coffee is unlike normal coffee. See how you get that coffee foam, that kind of like brood head, and you just get the um, Keurig machine. So the Keurig finish first. I think the Verissimo is going to finish here in a minute. This one's going to finish. This one will be last. Yep, that one's done. This one sounds like an airplane taking off towards the end. These machines are expensive. These are the cheapest. The Keurigs are the cheapest machines. But you can see, this is a whole different style of coffee. And that foam you're seeing, most of it melts away, but you do get quite a bit of that foam left after you brew your cup of coffee. And it actually tastes pretty good.
Okay, here goes the airplane's gonna take off. And it's spinning that pod. It's doing, it's spinning that pod and it really extracts everything out. There you go. So this machine, when I lift the lever, the pod just drops down. There's a storage thing behind here that stores the pod. This one's the coolest. So when I lift the lever, now watch, it's got a holding chamber, it puts it in. That's cool. It puts it over here and stores the, pod, the empty pods. In the Keurig machine, you just gotta lift it up and take your pod out. So now let's go over taste. I've done taste tests. Um, this one tastes the best, but it's really limited on You've got to get your pods from Nespresso, and you don't get to choose from a big variety. Um, the Verissimo is very close to a Starbucks coffee and espresso shot. I was actually really surprised how close it is. The Keurig, I've grown uh, accustomed to the Keurig, and I love it. Um, it. To me, it brews a good cup of coffee. Compared to these, this might be a little weak, but I, I guess I may, I may be used to that. But I, again, I could do a six ounce and make it a little stronger. But, you know, you can see the Keurig technology might be lacking a little bit, but these machines are so cheap and so readily available. You know, you got to order this one off of Nespresso or Amazon. You're not going to pick up one of these at Walmart. You're not going to pick up that at Walmart. You know, Walmart's got probably 10 different varieties of this Keurig machine. They all produce the same temperature of coffee. It's around 155 to 160. So if I had to pick a winner with coffee, I love the taste of that. It's just, you're, like I said, you go online, you're getting these coffees that I've never had before. So they give you a, a starting pack when you buy this machine, but you get names that you're not familiar with. Now, they're going to, you're going to want to get a sample pack to kind of try them all. And you might, you'll probably find one you really like that, hey, that tastes like Folgers or hey, that tastes like this. Um, they've got different levels of darkness and that. It's just, it's going to take some while to get used to. Again, you've got your coffee pods, and these are your espresso pods. Again, the names are just a little different, but it is something you'll get used to. Uh, the Verissimo, lots and lots of Starbucks pods. I think just about every kind of Starbucks roast or espresso roast they make at Starbucks is what they produce. And again, the Keurig, it's just whatever is out there. Every kind of cake up you could imagine. Let's talk cost. So, pods. Average cost 50 cents. Average cost about a buck 25 for these Nespresso's. These average cost about 80 cents, getting close to a dollar. So you can see the Keurig wins on, on cost. You know, environmentally friendly, this is all metal. So this would be a little easier to recycle, you know. Um, this, is, this is like a standard uh, K cup. It's plastic, it's got a uh, this. You know, even the espresso uh, pod has this extra piece of plastic in there to take up some of the room. And then K-cups, you know, they're a little worse, but you've got plastic, you've got paper, and the coffee grounds and foil. So environmentally, this one's probably the most environmentally. What I've been reading online is so you, you get in with these, they want you to they have a mail-in program where you mail in your whole pods. These were the hardest to recycle. You know, the original line. The coffee's really compacted in there. They're hard to cut open. Um, but it is all metal. I didn't find any paper in there or anything. Oh yeah, there is a little, yeah, there's a little paper filter down there at the bottom. Okay, so that's all I can think of with the coffee. Let's do an espresso shot. Okay, so these two have added trays that you can add. This one's a really cool tray. This one has a tray that folds out. So let's grab the espresso pod. We're gonna put it in, got it closed. We're gonna open this. I got one espresso pod left. We're gonna put it in. Now I don't necessarily have an espresso pod. I use my, I use coffee K-cups for my espresso shots. And then over here, you got to read the boxes. So this pink one is an espresso. 
the blue, the brown one is a lungo. So this is a double shot, but we'll just do the single shot. So this is, you put the pod in like this, push that down. So we'll come over here. We'll press this button first. This is the espresso button. I gotta lock this, then press that. I gotta hit latte, then the K button. And then I gotta do an espresso shot right there. This one's, this one's the loudest. So that was really quick. There's that one. That one's done. And so the Keurig machine is starting. This one's taken off like an airplane. Now what's interesting about this is, so even the Verissimo machine gives you a little bit of that, that coffee, kind of like that way they brew it, that foam. Same with this, you get quite a bit more of it. You know, the, the uh, Keurig machine, you don't get any of it. Now with this machine, you do get some of that. So it must be in how they're brewing it. You know, the Keurig machine is definitely not brewing it in the same way. Now I'm not a coffee expert by no means, um, but espresso shots, are so concentrated and so bitter, you know, it's, it, I, I can't tell a difference. Um, when I do my cappuccinos and lattes, you know, there again, I put syrup in them and the syrup's going to kill whatever bitterness or kind of coffee taste is in there. So again, I'm not the best expert. I just want to show you how they're brewing. Um, I've tried all these espresso shots in um, lattes and cappuccinos. They all taste good. With this one, the lowest you can get when you do the latte and the K button is two ounces. So that's the smallest amount of coffee you can run through a K cup. Again, that's a really small amount. That's 1.35 ounces. Um, this one's 1.35 ounces. And this one's about one point. You know, this machine I found varied a little bit. You know, they say, well, it was this much, but I did find it kind of moved up and down just a little bit. So this is about 1.35 ounces too. coffee or the espresso shots so let's use that shot and let's let's froth some milk now one thing I noticed so this machine had the least amount of clearance around so a lot of times I like to froth my milk like in a in a glass and then I want to put the glass with the froth milk under here and brew my shot right into the milk this one had the least amount of clearance I mean, it's got this tray that comes out. But even with this, I found that I couldn't put very big glasses. I mean, I can put this one in there. But for some other drinks, I need a little bit bigger. This one, the clearance was okay. I could take this out. And I could, this had a drip tray, so I could get more clearance that way. And of course, the Keurig machine, I had the most clearance on, and I could pull this, I could pull this drip tray out if I needed to. And with this one, it's got a little tray. This one also was pretty compact as far as what, what kind of glass you can get in there. And again, they all brew about the same temperature. I think it's about one, it's a little bit cooler than a coffee. It was right around 155. But they cool off so quick, um, it's really hard to tell. Okay, so I've got milk in the frothers. I should have showed you before. This one's got the frother in the lid and the magnet down there kind of spins it. This one, the Nespresso, the whisk is down in there and it spins on top of a, on something. Here, there's a whisk down inside there and it spins it. And then here, this uses um, steam and milk to make the froth. So the advantages of these three here, so this one can, this one can froth it hot or cold, and you just hold the button in. If you want it cold, you hold the button in until it turns blue, and it'll froth it cold. Otherwise, it's going to heat it to 150 degrees. Same with this one. You press the button once. 
it's going to froth it to 150 degrees. Same with this one. This one does have a latte and a cappuccino line. And it's got a cold button. So if you don't press the cold button, it's going to froth it to 150 degrees. This one only froths it hot. You, there is no cold. And you have to hit this button here. Because it, it's kind of like an automatic feature. So it'll, it'll run the froth and then it'll, it'll do the espresso shot. So we may get another espresso shot in there, but I'll try to stop it. So let's start the frothers. That one's going. That one's going. Sometimes this has to warm up a little bit. It's going. So there's an espresso. And then let's hit this one here. And I've got it set onto about medium foam. Now you, when these things go off, they don't make a sound other than this one beeps at you, which is really nice. Except if you have dogs, it kind of scares dogs. But these, you got to watch them. You want to get your froth out as soon as it goes off. Because otherwise, it starts to kind of stick inside there. And it doesn't pour out real easy. But if you get it out as soon as you can, um, it pours out really nice. Okay, so that one's done. This one's done. These are all done. So let's get these out. This one has nice, rich, lots of foam. There's that thing down there. Sorry if I'm hurrying a little bit, but I just... I know it sticks if you don't get it out right away. There's that one. See how it kind of starting to stick. This one is still spinning. This one does it right into the cup. So we've got our nice rich foam. Huh, this one spilled over. I thought I filled it to the line. I might have overfilled that one just a tad. Okay, so that beeped at us, let it know it's done. See, there's that frother down in there, nice and hot. I've checked the temperature, these are all 150 degrees. Even that one there. Okay, so I'm going to pour in the espresso shot. I'm going to show you all the cups. Like I said, no sediment. Just a little bit of sediment. I've never had that before on a Keurig machine. And then there we have that. So here's how much foam you get compared to the milk. You know, these two frothers act almost identical. You get a lot of froth, a lot of foam. This one, you can control the foam a little bit. It's got a cappuccino line and a latte. If I had to hit the cappuccino button first, like this one, you don't get as much uh, foam. So let's talk cleanup. Unfortunately, these frothers are the hardest to clean up. You can't put them in the uh, dishwasher just because they've got um, electric connections on the bottom. So you got to kind of wash them out from the top. Little time consuming, same with this one. You can't put it in the dishwasher. This one's the easiest to clean. I can take this whole thing and put it in the dishwasher. It's got this little uh, black thing that's held in there by a magnet. If I just take it over and, and tamp it a little bit, that black thing will come out. This by far is the easiest to clean. All the electrical connections are down in here. You have to wipe that out. You can't, you can't put, get water down there. This one, um, it does have a clean function. 
you press this button and it'll run some steam through here and clean this pipe out. And then I can take this, put this in the refrigerator, but after, you know, three or four days, I eventually do have to clean this. This all comes apart, the lid comes off, the pipes come out. You can get it pretty clean, but it's a little time consuming. So I just touched on a few of the, of the properties of these. I've got detailed reviews of each one of these machines where I go into all of the features and especially the Keurig K Cafe. I make all kinds of different drinks with it. Same with this one, I got detailed and drinks. Um, you know, my pick right now is the Keurig K Cafe just because I'm kind of used to it and I can get whatever K cups I want. Um, to me, the coffee tastes fine. Um, this coffee is definitely different. It's definitely, it, it tastes more like an original coffee. But the frothers are a little more work to clean up. I just love this frother cleanup. Um, it's so simple. And cost. So, Starbucks. So I think Starbucks stopped making these. I don't, I don't know a lot about this Verissimo line. Um, I bought this off Facebook Marketplace for 60 bucks. They're, they're going for around 100 bucks, a Verissimo machine. Um, the Nespresso, like I said, I picked this up off Facebook Marketplace for about 100 bucks. These are going, you know, new. This is about a $300 machine. So you can find them on uh, Facebook Marketplace. You know, Keurigs are just everywhere. Um, you're going to want to be careful. Keurigs can be um, not taken well care of so they don't last you. And this is the original line. Um, these, and like I said, this gets really confusing. Uh, the, the, you'll see, oh, it says it's a Nespresso machine. Well, Nespresso has two lines and... The Nespresso, I got a comparison video just on the two Nespresso machines. Um, I've also got, so you want to keep up on descaling these machines. They have heating elements in there. If you use these machines regularly, I got a video on how to descale each one of these. It has a different uh, procedure and use a different solution. You know, this one is the coolest. You know, it looks the coolest. It's the most, it's, it's made the best. It's just quality. I just wish their pods were a little more um, easier for to understand. You know, maybe if I bought a bunch of the pods and tried them, I would find the ones I liked. But they're kind of expensive. And you have to buy them in bulk. I was on Amazon, and the, the you have to buy $30 worth to, to get a flavor. And it's like, ugh. You know, K-Cups, I go to Walmart. I can, I can buy a you know 12-pack for 10 bucks. Try a different flavor. Oh, I didn't like it. You know, I'm not out a whole bunch of money. So, I just love the Keurig machine. The original line, you know, yeah, it, it, it makes really good, it makes a good espresso shot. It's got a good milk frother. Um, it's just a pod machine. So, but it's a, it does have the smallest footprint of them all. But I would have to say the Keurig, then this one. Than the Verissimo. But the Verissimo, if you like Starbucks, it's spot on with their taste. I don't know how they're doing it, but they're they're doing it spot on with their taste. I just don't know if they're going to be around. Um, so I hope this video helped. It was, it was a lot of preparatory work, and I didn't know what direction to kind of go in, but I know sometimes the best thing to do is just to make the drinks and let people see. So these all these drinks taste good. Um, you're not going to go wrong. You know, you can add your syrups, your whipped cream and all that. They're going to taste really good. I've got videos, like I said, a bunch of videos on how to do Starbucks drinks with this. They come out really well. Um, they're just a good taste and drink at home. So I hope this video helped. Leave your comments down below. If you've got any questions, um, please leave them down below. I check my comments on a daily basis. My videos are intended to help people. I hope this video helps. Thanks, everybody, for your support. And if you could, please like and subscribe.